Hello guys, in this occasion, me, Anjar Spati with you, together with my colleagues Nabila Misudarto and Nadir Agustin, will present to you about the fraud cases perpetrated by Gaius Tambunan, in particular related to tax. So, you guys may be familiar with this photo, which is him captured watching a tennis tournament in Nusa Dua, Bali, while serving his 30 year sentence in supposedly prison. Who is him actually? What did he do so that he get that sentence? Gaius Tambunan is a former Class 3A civil servant who held the position of objection reviewers in the objection and appeal section of the Electorate General of Taxation. Suspicion arose in October 2009 when PPATICA, or the Financial Transaction Report and Analysis Center, found suspicious transactions and balance in Gaius bank accounts. For a young civil servant with the position he was holding, it is highly unusual to have a 25 billion rupiah to his name which is spread over 23 bank accounts. His lavish lifestyle was another indication having an opulent house with a lot of cards. Further investigation by Indonesian Corruption Watch suggests that his net worth amounted to 114 billion rupiah deposited in numerous safe deposit boxes, bank accounts, and certificate of deposits. For the numerous fraud case he perpetrated in January 2011, he was sentenced to a combined 30 years to serve in prison. There are actually a lot of cases related to him, but we decided to limit it into four. The first one is corruption and tax objection case of PT Surya Alam Tunga. The second one is tax evasion case of PT Mega Cipta Jaya. The third is Bumi Resources, Kaltim Rimakul, and Sunset Policy of PT Arubmin. And the fourth one is money laundering. More details of each of these four will be discussed further shortly. Gaius exercised an abuse of power of the position he held in the Director General of Taxation, enabling him to do such frauds. Aside from his quote unquote clients, there are a number of parties in full to smooth out his acts. The cases in full, to name a few, several tax offices, including his boss, Bambang Heru Ismiarso the Director of Objection and Appeals. He also brought Police Commissioner Arafat Eni and Prosecutor Siru Sinaga, who should in fact act as his investigator, and also Judge Mutadi Asnun. From then on, the investigation team found a large amount of evidence leading to multiple cases of tax fraud. Mega Chitra Jaya Garmindo Corporation on the 7th of October 2009, the Bariskim investigator of National Police Headquarters named Gaius a suspect by sending a Notice of Commencement of Investigation, or SPDP. As mentioned before, Gaius is a civil servant and had funds of 25 billion rupiah in his ba Panin bank account, which is unlikely for someone of his status. Through the development of the investigation, there were three suspicious transactions originating from two parties namely Roberto Santanias and Mega Chitra Jaya Garmindo Corporation. Transactions originating from Roberto, a tax consultant, was worth 25 million rupiah, while from Mega Chitra Jaya Garmindo Corporation was worth 370 million rupiah. Mega Chitra Jaya Garmindo Corporation is owned by a Korean businessman, Mr. Son, and is engaged in garment. The transaction by Mega Chitra Jaya Garmindo Corporation was done twice to Gaius's other accounts in BCA Bank. The transaction was carried out in two stages, namely in September 1, 2007, in the amount of 170 million rupiah, and on August 2, 2008, on the amount of 200 million rupiah. After researching and investigating, there was no evidence of corruption and money laundering, rather pure tax evasion. The money itself was, was meant to help with tax management of the establishment of a garment factory in Sukabumi. But the owner, Mr. Son, whereabouts were unknown. The money went into Gaius's account in which he did not follow up with. The money was not used or returned, it just sat in Gaius's account. Bakri Group On Wednesday, December 8, 2010, after receiving questions from the Chairman of Panel of Judges, Albertino Ho, in the trial at South Jakarta District Court, Gaius Sabunan was outspoken about the 28 billion rupiah in his 21 accounts in Panin Bank and Bicha. Gayu said that the money came from fees he received after helping with tax issues from three companies all belonging to Bakri Group. 
that were PT Kaltim Prima Coal or KBC Corporation, Bima, Bumi Resources, and Arut Min Corporation. The total fee received by Gaius was actually around 35 million rupiah. He was first asked to issue KPC's tax assessment for 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2005, where the results had been completed by regulation. Previously, it had been held back for one year due to exchange rate differences. It should have been in rupiah, that was still in dollars. He attained 500,000 US dollars in compensation which in rupiah at the time was equal to 5 billion rupiah. Second was preparing for the appeal hearing of Bumi Resources Company, that is, making a rebuttal to the appeal letter so that Bumi Resources was ready when appealed. He obtained 1 million US dollars or 10 billion rupiah. Lastly, it was related to Arutmin Company's sunset policy in 2007. He was asked through Alif Kuntroro to review whether it was in accordance with tax regulations in which he approved of and was rewarded 2 million US dollars or 20 billion rupiah. Surya Alam Tunggal Corporation Gayus Tambunan, along with his superior, Maruli, the head of reduction and objection section of the Directorate of Tax Objection and Appeal, as well as Humala Napitupulu, handled SAT Corporation's tax objection. This case originated from the sale of SAT Corporation's asset worth 4.8 billion rupiah. From the results of the inspection of the Siduarjo Tax Office East Java, SAT Corporation has not paid VAT for the sale of company assets in 2004, and there was a VAT payable in the purchase of company assets since 1994. SAT Corporation filed an objection as they considered there was an error in inspection for the application of VAT Article 16D Law No. 11, Year 1994. The VAT for the sale of assets had been paid in the amount of 190 million rupiah. The result of Gaius's research stated that the Article 16D had not been valid when the sale and purchase transaction took place. Law number 11, year 1994, came into force on the 1st of January 1995. Albertino Ho, on Wednesday, January 19, 2011, said, as the executor in the Directorate of Objection and Appeals, Gaius was negligent when handling objections of SAT Corporation's tax. In addition, the judge considered that Gaius had abused his authority. According to the judge, Gaius had proposed accepting all tax objections from SAT Corporation. The proposal was then approved, starting from Humala Napitopulo as a reviewer, Maroli Pandapotan Manurong as the head of reduction and objection section, Babang Heru Ismiarso, as well as the Director of Objection and Appeals. As a result of receiving the tax objection, according to the judge, SAT Corporation received a profit of around 570 million rupiah, which has proven to harm the company finances. Money laundering. Gaius was charged of money laundering amounting to 74 billion rupiah after the police found the amount in a safe deposit box owned by Gaius in Mandiri Kelapa Gading branch. The treasure consists of gold, US dollars, and Singapore dollars. However, it is not clear where Gaius got such large fortune from. In the next part of this presentation, we would know what law and regulations affected by Gaius's acts, the sentence that he got from the court, and the impact of his actions to him, the citizen of the citizen of Indonesia and the third general of tax. For the first case, which is a case of tax evasion done by Pete Mika Citra Raya, Gaius was charged with Article 372 and Kitab Unang Unang Hukum Bidana, where at first he was set free by the judge of Tangerang District Court, Mutadi Asnan, because there was no evidence. However, the prosecutor from this case appealed, and finally Gaius was sentenced to eight years in prison. Later, it is known that Gaius bribed the judge of Tangerang District Court. For the case of Gaius and Patrice Surya Alam Tunga, he was charged with Article 3, Joe Article 18 on 1 number 31 of 1999. Concerning corruption as a criminal act, at first he was given seven years in jail by the panel of judges in the court of Jakarta Selatan. After the stage of appeal, his sentence got increased to ten years in jail by the Jakarta High Court. However, in the Supreme Court, his sentence got increased again into twelve years of imprisonment. Because of this, Indonesia had to compensate for the tax paid back to PT SAT with the amount of five hundred seventy million rupiah. Guys also has to pay back three hundred million as a compensation. 
million rupiah as a compensation for his acts. For the case of Gaius and Pete Kachepe, Pete Bumar Resources and Pete Arodman, he was charged with Article 11 and 12 P on Law Number 31 of 1999 as amended in Law No. 21 of 2001 concerning corruption as a criminal act, specifically about gratifications or fees as a reward. As for the money laundering case, he was charged with Article 3 on Law No. 15 of 2002 as amended in Law No. 8 of 2010 concerning the act of money laundering. For both these cases, Gaius was sentenced to eight years in prison. Some of his wealth was also confiscated, such as money amounted to 74 billion rupees, a house, 31 gold bars, and cars. One of the main impact of these cases is that there is a decrease in faith and belief of Indonesian citizens towards tax institutions, which is the Directory General of Tax, which leads them to be more reluctant in paying their taxes. Because of this, the Directory General of Tax has to launch a crash program where they focus more on the area that needs more attention. In conclusion, as has been explained before, there are four cases related to tax fraud and money laundering done by Gaius Nambunan. The first case is the tax objection case of Gaius and Peter Suri Alam Tunggal, where Gaius was negligent in handling tax objections made by Peter SAT, causing a loss for the country. He was not sentenced for 12 years in prison. The second case of the tax is the tax evasion case of Peter Mega Chitra Jaya, where they transferred certain of my amount of money to Gaius that was meant to help the tax management of the government factory, but Gaius did not take care of the tax. He was sentenced for eight years uh, in jail. The third case is the case of Gaius and three Bakri, Bakri corporations, Pete Bumi Resources, Pete Kachepe, and Pete Arugnin, where Gaius received fees as a reward and helping them sort out their tax issues. Last but not least, the case of money laundering done by Gaius. For both these cases, he had to spend eight years in jail. First combined with other cases of Gaius not related to uh, tax such as gratification of public servants and forgery of documents, guys, Namunan has to spend 30 years in jail.